The history of Chickahominy Lake is, is really diverse, documented stories of Pocahontas and Captain John Smith and the stories about the Civil War and the, the Revolutionary War that took place here. Chickahominy Lake is, is known for its bass fishing and for its waterfowl hunting. It's mostly a bald cypress swamp. Nutria are semi-aquatic mammals from South America. Um, they were introduced into this country in the 1940s and 1950s. The fur market crashed that time, and when it did, a lot of the people who farmed Nutria back then released those animals into the wild. We've been tracking Nutria populations for like the last 15, 20 years. And they've all stayed south side. They've never crossed the James River. And what's so significant about that is south of the James River, we have nutria habitat, but it's mostly black gum marshes, bald cypress marshes. It's suboptimal habitat for nutria. But north of the James River, we have incredibly ecologically significant river systems that are perfect habitat for nutria. And uh, we want to protect them. Even them getting into the, the Chickahominy River system is a crisis, an ecological crisis, because this is just a stepping stone to all of the rivers north of here and west of here. They could turn them into open water, changing the entire ecology of those river systems. Ultimately, what makes them so bad is they can outcompete our native wildlife. So we have muskrats and beavers in this system. Nutria outcompete them by destroying the habitat. They eat a lot of the root systems in, in the emergent vegetation, and so they dig that stuff up, and, and our plant systems aren't able to recover from it. So what ultimately happens is they dig it, they eat the roots, they destroy what's holding those soils together, and then when you have big storm events or even just normal rainfall, you get the erosion effect, and we end up losing our marshes. They're converted from emergent vegetation to open water in just course of years due to nutria alone. So where we are is on an area in a bay on the upper Chickahominy Lake, and this little tump of a tree is what's left of what used to be marsh. This duck blind that's out here in front of us, that's an older duck blind, used to be on the shoreline. Finn is a uh, conservation canine. He's the second one we've had for the department working on the Nutria project. The great thing about conservation canines are they can detect things that are unseen to people. They could smell in parts per trillion. So you're talking about a teaspoon of sugar and two Olympic sized swimming pools. Finn's um, been trained to detect nutria scat and then we'll move on to some other nutria odors in the future. Conservation dogs are just like law enforcement dogs and that they're high drive animals. All they want to do is work and if they're not working, they're not happy. No offense. This is a nutria detection platform. This is something that was devised by the USDA in Maryland in their eradication efforts on Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge. The goal of this is to draw nutria attention to it by using lure. They climb up on this platform and then there's little snares. The snares are a frayed cable that are used to um, snag the hair of the animal as they climb up onto the platform. It seems like they might be using them as territorial or even a re reproductive place where they can leave markings and signs. And that's where the dog comes in. If a nutria had been here or anywhere in this area within about 60 yards of us right now, he'd be able to smell it. The other way we monitor for nutria populations is just visually. And the way we do that is to capture evidence through cameras. And this is a trail camera. And this thing is pointed down on one of our platforms for detection. Sometimes they don't leave us evidence. So the backup is the, to have cameras. So this project depends on public support. We need the public to know what's going on and care about what's going on and give their resources and time to Virginia. We've put signs up at public boat ramps. Those are nutria identification signs. They describe generally what nutria look like. And then they also give a phone number that they can call when they see it. And then we take Finn to work in the field and tell us if, if there's actually been nutria there. And then to start finding the populations and eradicating them and preventing them first from expanding north of the James River. Ultimately, in a perfect world, we would expand that, that detection and eradication and eliminate nutria from all of Virginia. 
the reality is, is if we can stop the one nutria that shows up here that could lead to a population explosion that would destroy all the wildlife populations that depend on that habitat, that would be an easy win.